Hi, I'm Kim Tasso. Um, I'm going to be talking today about leadership teams, not lone leaders, um, which is important for both uh, business success and also has uh, implications on the impact of succession, which is a concern to many firms. I'm going to use two characters in this brief video, um, the magpie and a pigeon. And I'd like you to think about which appeals to you most, which do you think you're most like, uh, and also just think about why that might be. And I'll explain in a moment. But first, I'd like to start with a story. Uh, many years ago, I was working with a very successful uh, property business, which was all over the UK, many offices. Um, and there were two key characters in the leadership team. Now, the senior partner or chairman was a very gregarious character. He really knew everybody in the organisation. He was brilliant at business development and client relationships. Um, he was very visionary. Uh, he was very persuasive um, and he was a, a brilliant uh, leader. Um, Working alongside him was his colleague, who was the managing partner or managing director, who was a more reserved individual. He was brilliant at uh, analysing information, uh, collecting relevant data, uh, seeking views, um, you know, everything in a spreadsheet, uh, thinking about risks, uh, much more kind of rational. So a very emotional uh, leader in terms of passion, and drive and a, a very uh, more rational leader in terms of looking at the data and the facts of the situation. Now in many management models um, there's a need to balance the relationship side of leadership both individuals and whole teams and the task side at achieving the business aims or business objectives. So relationship and task and many leadership models talk about how we balance between the two. Okay so let me go back to my characters. Now if we start with our magpie now he or she is a very fine character, very attractive um, with really quite uh, distinctive uh, plumage. Uh, they have a quite a, a loud and recognisable shout as well. Um, Magpies are supposedly like shiny new things. Um, there is a myth that actually magpies steal shiny things, um, although there was some research done at uh, Exeter University in 2014 which disproved this, but bear with me for now on that one. Um, now, stealing shiny new things is quite good. Um, Tom Peters famously talked about creative swiping where um, people would go out, find the best ideas from other environments and apply them to their own business. Um, now, what's really good is this kind of curiosity is a really important trait and, you know, being curious about new things, uh, you know, weak signals, uh, new technology is really important for a leader. Um, having that interest in looking forward and looking at new things is great. Um, can be a bit of a problem though if um, they get bored with more routine and important tasks because they're always looking at the, the next best thing. Um, so that's not such a good thing in terms of they might get a bit bored. Um, the other side of things is you know it's black and white and, and that can be a kind of way of thinking about things, very black and white thinking, you know, yes or no, good or bad, um, which means they can be decisive, uh, but it does mean sometimes maybe they don't consider the shades of grey that we have in our very complex and fast changing world. Um, the other thing about magpies is, well, despite the story about one for sorrow, two for joy, magpies can be quite solitary. We often see them on their own or with maybe one other magpie in, at a distance. So they're quite solitary creatures. OK, so let's have a think about the pigeon. Now, I think pigeons are hugely underrated and undervalued. Um, look their plumage is a bit sad it's a bit grey they kind of tend to kind of blend in to the city landscape um, and there are many many uh, pigeons um, but let's think about some of the good qualities of a pigeon 
Now, pigeons are known for having a homing instinct. It's some internal map, an internal compass that always makes sure they return home. And in leadership, you know, we need to have a, a clear direction and a strategy for where the business is going. And it's really good that we keep that in mind and return to that regional strategy, even if we do revise it. So having that kind of you know guiding north star and always focusing or remembering to look back at, at what the plan is is quite a good attribute of, of pigeons um the other thing uh, about pigeons is they're known as being messengers um, and in the war they were used to carry messages uh, between central control and the frontline troops um so they're good at um communication um i also think um they are quite quick uh if you remember the children's uh, cartoon uh, series, which was kind of dastardly and muttly or you know, catch the pigeon, um, you know, there were these you know, baddies who were very clever, always trying to you know, stop the pigeon, catch the pigeon. But he was always smart enough and, and fast enough to, to get away. Um, they are often in, in flocks, pigeons, so they're pretty good team players. Um, you know, they don't feel necessary to rise up and be the leader of the flock. Um, so they're really good at, at team playing. Um, and also, uh, pigeons are pretty good nurturers. Um, you rarely see a baby pigeon because they make sure that they are grown and self-sufficient um, before they leave the nest, which is a really good thing around developing people and developing those around you. So I'm going to put my pigeon back here. Um, there was a book called Rocket Fuel in 2016, which talked about essential combinations in leadership. And they talked about uh, the difference between visionaries who are focused on new ideas and the future and integrators, those who actually make those ideas and that vision become real. So maybe our visionary magpie and our integrator pigeon is a really good uh, combination. I'm, I'm convinced on that original story that that business would not have been successful without those two perspectives. The latest management thinking that we're seeing from the leading business schools talks about gig leadership um, and this is where there's an idea that the leadership um, of a team or an organisation should be rotated amongst different people. So that means that you get the benefits of very different skill sets at the uh, leading the business, which is great because we know diversity is important um, for great decisions. It, it also means no one kind of gets burnt out uh, because everyone else is taking some of the responsibility. And I guess it also means that decisions are made in the best interest of the organisation and there's no possibility of making decisions which are in your self-interest because you're only there for a short while as the leader. Okay, so uh, some thoughts around uh, leadership teams. Could we get the attributes of both the magpie and the pigeon in one leader? Good question. Um, and who do you think you identify with most? Which do you recognise as more like you? And, and whichever you are, perhaps some thinking around developing your more magpie attributes or your more uh, pigeon attributes. Thank you very much indeed for watching and listening. I hope we have the chance to talk uh, soon.